Hi, I'm Robert Alexander from iChem Labs, and this is the Interface Overview Tutorial for ChemDoodle version 5. The Doodle Board is the main drawing area for ChemDoodle. You can see rulers on the left and above. These tell you the scale of the Doodle, along with the position of the mouse cursor, so scrolling up and down also moves the ruler appropriately. You can only horizontally scroll on Mac OS X. Sometimes you'll want to work on multiple doodles, so I'm going to open a few documents and show you how to manage them. You can open as many documents as you want. Just click the appropriate tab to switch documents. And if you have too many tabs, you can just browse through them by clicking this icon and selecting the tab. You can close a tab by clicking the X or right-click on the tab to access further options. You might have noticed that there are more cursor symbols than just a basic pointer. Each one is contextual, dependent on what tool you have selected, and what your cursor is hovering over on the doodle area. Let's go through them and see what each one means. After your basic cursor, you'll find a lot of cursor options on this toolbar here. Starting on the left, there are two buttons which activate the lasso cursor. This allows you to fine-tune your selection, for instance if you want to select only certain atoms in a molecule. If you then hover over your selection, you'll see the grabbing cursor, which in turn will turn into the grabbed cursor once you click and begin to drag the content around. The next option activates the pinpoint cursor. You can drag a rectangle around the selection instead of using the lasso tool. This second cursor allows pinpoint accuracy. It is also the cursor used in accurate placement when using shape tools. The next button allows you to rotate in 3D. You'll notice the 3D grabbing tool and grabbed cursors are at a distinct slant and have additional shading compared to the normal grabbing tool. The last two cursors don't actually have specific buttons. Instead, they are contextual based on where the mouse is hovering. If you hover over any one of the stretch arrows, the resize cursor appears. You can adjust the size of your selection in that direction. Or, if you want to rotate the selection, I can just hover on the edge until the rotate cursor appears and then rotate my selection. Okay, so far I've been mostly focusing on what goes on inside the doodle area. What about all this workspace outside it? The workspace can be rearranged in any manner you please. You can resize the whole area and place the toolbars in various windows wherever is convenient for you. All changes will remain next time you boot up the program. If you don't like to change, go into Window, Default Workspace and you can reset the layout. Alternatively, if you want to save your own layout, set the workspace to whatever you want and go to Window, Save Workspace. In the future, then you just need to select Revert Workspace anytime you want to return to this most recently saved workspace layout. In the workspace, outside of the Doodle area, there are a series of toolbars available. The very first toolbar, called Files and Formatting, provides a variety of shortcuts for saving and opening documents, basic text formatting tools, along with a couple of tools for changing the color of a selection or the scale of the document. I've already shown some of the content toolbar. The rest of the toolbar allows you to manipulate content. For instance, I can erase content or revert a structure to an optimized 2D shape. The Strokes toolbar provides settings which affect the size and style of bonds drawn. The remaining toolbars only alter the result of left-clicking the mouse button. These toolbars are labels, rings, bonds, arrows, orbitals, and shapes. Think of every button on all six of these toolbars as radio buttons. Just like on an old-style radio, when you push one button in, all the other buttons on the radio are pushed out or deselected. You can't have a methyl group and a cyclooctane ring selected at the same time. When you move over to an atom and left-click, it will only register the most recently selected button. Another thing to note is that if one of these buttons has a small triangle in the corner, it means that there is more than one option available. To access these alternative options, hold down left click and drag the mouse slightly and the alternative options will appear. Release the left mouse over the option you want and the button will change to it accordingly. There are still three items left over in the workspace. These are just some of the widgets which are available to provide added functionality in ChemDoodle. For instance, the History widget is great if you find you've made a huge mistake. You can easily bail yourself out by going through the history of your actions. 
You can click back and forth until you find the point in your work that you're satisfied with and continue working from there. On a Mac, you need to go outside of the workspace to find the menus. However, if you're working in Windows or Linux, the menu will appear at the top bar of the Chemdoodle interface.